Hi there, I'm Janelle Lawrence, the Urban Teacher, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanted to go over everything that I've done this week, or actually last week, in my social studies class, so week three of social studies. For those who don't know, I teach sixth grade social studies in New York City, and this year we're doing geography of the Eastern Hemisphere, so everything geography. Um, right now, we are doing present day geography, and then the next unit should be the Paleolithic era, the Neolithic era. So that's the kind of things I do in my classroom. If you're interested in this kind of content, or if you're a middle school social studies teacher, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Additionally, um, I give I give advice and I go over like lessons that I do in my social studies class, but I also give like tips and tricks to new teachers. I am a PCT at my school, so that's a peer collaborative teacher. So I help new teachers, I go into the classrooms, I give I give assistance where needed, um, especially like before observations or before the teachers, the um, admin come in and like ding you for doing something, I might come in and help. I also mentor some new teachers. Anyway, so this is what I did this week in social studies. Everything that I did is taken from, um, I have a, a mini unit in my TPT store. so. It was very easy this week. I just downloaded the slides and the lesson plans from there, and then I taught it to my class. Of course, I made changes for my particular students, and then you have to put in like differentiations and that kind of stuff, but it's basically that. All right, so this this mini unit is geography and development. Oh, I'll show you that. And the question is, how does geography influence development of an area? One thing, so that the first one I show you, that's the slide that's given, but this is how like I make changes so it fits my particular class. So this is what my kids got. But it's so easy. I love that I can just download it and take the slides I need and edit it for to fit my particular classroom. This week we looked at um the first lesson in that mini unit is about what does development mean in the context of Accra Ghana? They had to learn about, they had to define um, development. First, it was students that came up with their own definition after looking at images that represent development. So what it was is they looked at like two different images and then they read the little piece on the bottom and then they had to come up with their own definition for development. So that's basically what that class was about. And then I asked them to write the three words that they think of when they think of development. And we actually got more and I showed them how to do a concept map and how to collect certain things. I have shown this lesson before and this is a change that I made because I felt asking them to write a definition, it was a bit much for my sixth graders. So I had them just write the words that they think of and then I, in the next slide, gave them the definition of the word. And I went in and I made some changes to the lessons. So the thing is, I've taught sixth grade social studies before. I've taught the content. But I haven't taught, I never taught this particular lesson. Like I created a lesson from like stuff that I've done in the classroom or what I wish to do. So now that I've taught the lesson, I went back and made some changes. So if you bought this um, mini lesson, um, you will get a message soon about the updates I've made for this lesson. And there's so much and it's still, it's, I didn't change the price, but it's still a lot of updates. I've I've added more stuff to my lessons, to my slides, stuff that I think you will need. And one thing, big thing that I did was I made the documents. I, it was only English. Everything was in English. The readings were in English. But then I decided to add Spanish because I had Spanish speakers that needed that information. And then I also did it in French. So all the text will be in English, Spanish, and French. I think I'm going to go in and do the same, no, I'm not going to do it to the worksheets. If you want that kind of differentiation in your class, I think that's up to you. But I'm going to also, I um change the way I model certain things. I'm going to fix the answer. Like, there's going to be a lot of updates to it, so just look out if you already bought it. And by the time, by the end of next month, this month, it should be a better, more improved mini less, mini unit. This is something that I added. Like, so the this lesson, the um skill that I wanted to teach was site textual evidence. And I just went into, oh, you model it. But I felt like my kids needed a little bit more than what I was offering. So 
for this particular lesson, I decided to teach them how to cite textual evidence using direct quotation. And of course, um, elementary school teachers would have went over this, but the kids needed a, like a little bit of a reminder. And why not? So I created this poster and I posted it in the classroom. Well, I put in the order for it to be printed. It hasn't been printed yet. Actually, it was printed, but it's printed too small. So I put in the order for it to be printed again. But for now, it's just on the board. So it was like direct um, quotations and like the, the stems that you can use before and after. Well, before. So I have basic. And I want my sixth graders to start calling the name of the documents in it instead of just saying according to the text, especially since I teach social studies and sometimes, especially by the time you're seventh grade, they're going to be looking at multiple texts. Then we read an article about, um, about Accra and how, Accra Ghana and how development, the development someone is seeing after returning after a 20 year visit. After leaving 20 years ago, he's returning and talking about how, how much the country has changed or the city has changed. And they had to do that cite textual evidence using those um, sentence stems. So, well, you get what I'm talking. Keep swiping the wrong direction. So something like that. Now we did an exit ticket. Um, what write about one thing you learned about today regarding development of Accra, and then how does understanding the concept of development help us understand this, a city like Accra better? And I use that to decide for the next day my different groupings and the support students would need. So that was the first lesson of the week. I only do four periods a week for each class. But I'm going to show you five lessons just because one class had did this the week before, so they were a little bit ahead. So the second lesson was, so the first one was development. I don't know. Anyways, the second lesson was geography's impact on development. So in the first one, they learned the definition of development. In this one, they are learning the definition of geography. And it says, in what way does geography of New Delhi, India, influence its development? So I showed them a picture of India and a flag. In the first one, I showed a picture of Africa and where Ghana is on Africa. I just thought that was a cool idea. And then we went over the definition. They had to look at an image. So we used a lot of image to teach the definition. And they read the little excerpt on the bottom. And they started thinking about what is geography. Then we looked at it and they had to come up again with three words to describe geography. Because um, I wanted them to understand geography is not just about nature or the environment, but our interaction with, the, with it. And then I defined geography. I broke it down into pieces. And then I gave them the larger definition of geography. This, so the first time we did sites and textual events using direct quotes, direct quotation. Now we're using paraphrasing. And I have this poster again and showing the basic oh, I don't know if it's gonna for my face oh the basic and advanced to it so still waiting for my stuff to be printed then we read an article about New Delhi and then they learned different ways to give cited evidence like we use the stem in other words or the text suggests that kind of stuff in order to do it then we did an egg exit ticket some classes did the exit ticket some didn't i realized they needed more practice actually going through the article and doing the cited evidence so i felt like taking the time to do the exit ticket instead of having them practice citing textual evidence properly would have taken away from it so i was like you know what i'll just use what they wrote in their notebooks because i do check notebooks and i will use that for the data instead of the exit ticket and it worked pretty good for me the third day, we still did geography's impact on development, but this time we focused on Zurich, Switzerland, and I showed them a map of, um, a map of Europe, and we pointed out Switzerland. 
So the question is, in what way does geography of Zurich, Switzerland influence its development? So again, the idea of geography influencing development. Then for do now, we did something different. Instead of an image analysis, we did a combined sentence activity. So students were asked to combine two sentences. Uh, so you read the two sentences and you combine it to make one. And this is a really good writing activity. It's a quick write activity that encourages uh, <laughs> retention of content, but also ask them to practice literacy skills. So my students, a lot of them don't capitalize the first letter or they don't know how to use certain punctuation. So the, these activities and us frequently doing it is going to help them improve their, um, their writing as well as it's, it asks them to kind of summarize the stuff that they're learning. So they did that. Then I went over the definition of geography again. Then I showed them this, so the two that we've done so far, direct quotation and paraphrasing. In this class, in this, this year, we're gonna do four different kinds of ways to cite textual evidence, um, direct quotation, paraphrasing, summarizing, and making inferences. And I have a poster with all of them on it, and then these individual posters, which I love. I'm gonna put them in my TPT store sometime this week. The, I still don't have a hundred things in my store and the goal is to grow my store. So this will be coming. I just want to make sure. I love it. I seen a printed out version of it and I think it's so beautiful. It's such a pretty, um, a pretty anchor chart and it's like so simple. I love it. So then they read the, the article and in it they had to find, use some of the stems to cite textual evidence. And this time they got to choose between direct quotation and paraphrases. We didn't do the exit this time. Again, I wanted them to spend more time actually going through the article and getting to the end. The fourth day, we did it's still geography's impact on development, but this time we are we are prepping to do a Google Slides prep presentation. So the question is, how does the geography of a specific city such as Accra, Ghana, New Delhi, India, and Zurich, Switzerland influence their development? And I showed them this map to show that we looked at cities on three different continents across the world, and that even though they're different continents, it's still, um, geography is still going to um, influence how those cities developed. We did another sentence come back. I don't know, I'll show you. Another sentence combining activity. This time we did four sentences. And this particular set of students, they understand better as summarize the four. Last year when I did it with my seven readers, I just said to combine and they got it. So it's like, oh, summarize the four um, sentences and make it into one. Then I gave them the project. Imagine you are a junior researcher asked to prepare a presentation for a conference on the impact of geography on city development. Your task is to introduce a topic by focusing on three cities, Accra, Ghana, New Delhi, India, and Zurich, Switzerland. Create a Google Slides presentation that clearly introduces the relationship between geography and development using these cities as case, case studies. So um, we were supposed to get, wait, and then I t explained to them what a conference is. I modeled like walking into a conference and giving like my presentation. And then I said, we in ELA, they've learned how to create introductions at one point or, or the other. But now for a presentation, it looks slightly different. So then I introduced, the, um, I gave them this slide and I said, these are the stuff that an entry slide, introduction slide should have. So like a hook, attention grab, a pur purpose of presentation, overview, agenda, and thesis statement. And then I defined all of it for them. And then I modeled doing one for like a tech conference. So especially like the agenda, they needed to see how the agenda was set up, the purpose was set up, and the thesis statement. And we worked on that. Thing is, Our school is giving every student a laptop, but they haven't given them out as yet, and they're not gonna give them out until next week, the 25th, after do the I-Ready testing. So, 
I didn't have laptops, so we're not doing Google Slides presentation. But but I had them still like um draft doing this in their notebook, finding the attention grab and those kind of things. I really wish we had laptops because I want to model how to to do certain things on the laptop. So when we do have them, so this is like the first mini unit. So the next one, I want them to go quicker into the research and then the next so I didn't want to have to model certain things. So that's why I really had it in this unit where they had to do an intro slide. So but I'll tell you more. Just give me a minute. So the next day, the next day, the one where they should have had the laptop, you still did geography's impact on development. Same focus question. Now they were focusing on actually doing the um the slides. But before we even got there, they did a do now, which is another sentence combining activity. They combined four things. I redid, I re went over the tasks again, the prompt. I told them what needed to be done. And then I showed them this. So this is where I was kind of disappointed we didn't have the slides because I wanted to show them how to edit the certain things, how to change the background, how to add images as they do this activity. But we couldn't because... We didn't have no laptops, but instead I just had them do it by hand. Like I don't know, I don't know if it was a waste of my time to do this lesson, even though we didn't have slides. But I did want them to synthesize what they learned. I could have did it in a written form, but I was like, you know what? It's Friday. It's the last day of the week. Only two out of the four classes got this lesson because the other two, it would have been like on Monday. I'm not gonna give this lesson. I was just like, let me finish the, the, the week with this before I go on to a new mini lesson. So instead, I gave them colored pencils and I gave them um, computer paper and they pretended like they were making slides. They got to synthesize the information, but they didn't get to do what I wanted, where I wanted them to play around with Google Slides and figure out how to insert certain things and edit and change the fonts, stuff like that, like play around with the laptops. We feel like that our students grew up in this time where everybody has internet and computers are read readily available. But from my own observation, our students don't really know how to use computers. They know how to use a phone and they know how to use a tablet, but they don't know how to type and they don't know how to use it academically. So I wanted to use that time. But hey, next week, by the time I do my next mini units and get to the end, they will have time to practice with the computers. Anyways, that's everything I did this week in my social studies class. Again, if you want this um, mini unit, it is five lessons with all the all the slides, all the lesson plans. Um, let me see. That slide it has lesson plans, slides, the text in English, Spanish, and French, worksheets, answer sheets. Am I missing anything? I think that's everything you get. And it's, it is it is worth the price. Actually, you get more than the price because I went in and added those translations. And I went in and edited the slides to, add, to be more detailed. Before, I didn't have, like, the difference between the two types of citations. I didn't... I showed examples of it, but it wasn't... I didn't break it down to that extent. Okay? So, if you want this mini unit... I would say download the free one first. I'm going to update the free one so it has all that same information. Try it out, see if you like it. And if you like it, then come in and get the whole pack. It's five lessons, five slides, five everything. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in some way. If you're a social studies teacher, I'm inviting you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get um, tips and tricks that you can use in your social studies classroom. Even if you're not teaching 6th grade social studies, even if you, this is not the topic, I will have a wealth of information that could be helpful. I'm also quite, if you're a new teacher and just want to see what's going on in the classroom, even if it's not social studies, I'm inviting you to subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. And if you made it this far, I say like this video and even share it with someone that you think this might help. Thank you and have a great day.